Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. From a chilly John Stella Field in Omaha, Nebraska, we bring you this opening day of the two-day doubleheaders between the home team, the Bellevue University Bruins, and the visiting Dickinson State University Blue Hawks out of Dickinson, North Dakota. Good morning, everyone. Mick Krupski back behind the microphone. Chris Williamson alongside as well as we get ready to bring you double headers today and tomorrow. This series was supposed to have been played in North Dakota, but the temperature right now in Dickinson is 20 degrees. They expect uh, snow coming later this afternoon as well. So cooler heads prevailed, and we move the series here to John Stella Field in Omaha. Dickinson State will be the home team in today's contest and tomorrow as well. The Bruins, although playing at home, will be the visitors on the scoreboard and in terms of the lineup. Bellevue comes into today's contest on a five-game winning streak. The home team Bruins are currently 16-9 and overall, a perfect 4-0 and in the North Star Athletic Association. The Blue Hawks are 3-20 and overall, 1-3 and in the North Star. They played the Turbo last weekend in Wisconsin, winning the final game of that four-game set against the V-Hawks. So the Blue Hawks and V-Hawks last week, the Blue Hawks and the Bruins this week as we get ready for more play. Chris, what do you look forward to in this morning's first game? Uh, the weather warming up, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I'm sure all the players would agree with that as well. Um, with the, you know, Bellevue playing Dickinson, um, it's going to be, if they're locked in mentally, um, playing a team that you probably, in Bellevue's case, you probably should beat. Um, you should probably take all four. One, losing one of these games, one of these next four, if that were to happen, um, would be kind of a big loss, not only to in-conference record, but overall as well. It'd be a bad loss going on to their resume, going looking forward to postseason and stuff like that. Um, so they just have to keep playing the way they have been playing lately, to be honest with you. Um, if they do that, they should be fine in, in this series. Bruins have returned home from their Florida trip last week. They win that four-game set against Valley City, a midweek contest against Morningside from the Great Plains Athletic Conference. The Bruins clicking on all cylinders with the bat, with the glove, and on the mound. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both teams as the two head coaches meet with the umpiring crew. Michael Dowell in his fifth season, the head coach for Dickinson State. Dwayne Monlux, the head guy for Bellevue, in his 14th year with the program. Our two umpires today will be Michael Andrick and Braxton Arndt. All right, let's look at the starting lineup for the visiting Bellevue University Bruins, 16-9 overall, 4-0 in conference play. Leading off for the Bruins and playing center field, number 21, Jake Lacey. Batting second, the catcher, number 10, Logan Grant. Batting third for the Bruins is the first baseman, number 16, Alec Ackerman. The cleanup hitter for the Bruins is the left fielder, number 36, Stephen Elsner. The fifth hole hitter, number 24, the shortstop, Brendan Luther. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 31, Nick Grade. Batting seventh and playing second base, C.J. Townsend. Batting eighth and playing right field, Anthony Lind. And batting ninth, the designated hitter, number two, Tyler Monroe. On the hill for the Bruins this morning will be right-hander Dustin Shorey. Shorey three and one on the season, a 3.76 earned run average. Let's talk a little bit about Dustin Shorey. What are his pitches? What does he bring to the mound for the Bruins here in game number one? Uh, he's picked up <coughs> basically right where he left off last year. I mean, he was, I think he was All-American last year, went undefeated last year, and he picked off right where... Uh, he left off. He's been pitching pretty well. Um, he lost to Weber when they were down in Florida. And he pitched okay in that game. Um, he didn't have his best stuff. It, you know, I was watching it online and um, looked like he was a little off mechanically and, and that type of stuff. But he figured it out last week. Um, but sure, he's a... He's the number one for a reason. Um, he's high 80s, low 90s guy. He's got a lot of movement um, on all of his pitches, fastball, breaking ball, slider. I think he's throw. I pretty sure he throws a cutter in there too. Um, he his repertoire is very, very good. And that they brought him in to be the number one. That's why Bellevue got him. Um, he was injured this fall, so it took him a while to get back. He had a bicycle accident over the summer, and uh, so it took him a while to get back into. Um, 
into baseball activities after getting recovered from from all of his injuries from that. Uh, but he's picked up right where he's left off. Very good. So Dustin Shorey on the mound today for the Bruins. He'll be facing a Dickinson State Blue Hawk lineup that includes leading off center fielder number 14, Nathaniel Jillick. Batting second and playing second base, number 36, Alberto Nieto. Batting three, the third baseman, number five, Wyatt Wilharm. The cleanup hitter for the Blue Hawks will be their designated hitter, number three, Keanu Kalamayan. Batting fifth and playing left field, number 12, Clay Prell. Batting sixth, the catcher, number 30, Cam Erickson. Batting seventh and playing first base, number 24, C.J. Molina. Batting eighth and the shortstop, Number 11, Cole Simbab. And batting ninth, the right fielder, number 33, Luke Clinton. On the mound today for the Blue Hawks in game number one will be number seven, Trent Richter. Richter 0-5 on the season, a 5.10 earned run average. Again, a chilly day here in the Omaha Bellevue area, 35 degrees right now. Partly sunny, partly cloudy morning. We're expected to get up into the mid-50s today temperature-wise. Fortunately, not much of a wind blowing right now. What little wind is blowing about a five miles an hour out of the southeast, so that shouldn't affect play very much today. Coming to you from John Stella Field at Brown Park in Omaha, Nebraska. John Stella, famous guy here in the South Omaha area. He was a former player at Omaha South High School, went on to serve in our nation's military. After that, came back to college, played at Omaha University, was drafted by the San Francisco Giants after an outstanding college career, played a couple of years in the Giants program, but after got getting out of the minor leagues, he came back and was a longtime coach and mentor for the players at Omaha South High School's spring school season and summer Legion program as well. As we look out, the Blue Hawks will take the field. They'll be the home team for all four games today. What do you look for as an early key in today's action, Chris? Uh, it's going to be this lineup, you know, what kind of bats they can get, um, what they can do offensively against this pitcher. Um, and then for Dickinson, if he can keep this lineup at bay for as long as possible to give his offense a chance to uh, get it going against, against Dustin Shorey. Teams lined up on their respective foul lines at this time. We'll turn our attention to the flag out on the flagpole in center field as we get ready for our national anthem. National Anthem has concluded. We're ready for baseball. Bellevue Bruins and the Dickinson State Blue Hawks coming to you live from John Stella Field at Brown Park. Let's set the defense for Dickinson. Across the infield, it'll be C.J. Molina at first. Second baseman, Albert Nieto. The shortstop is Cole Simbab. And the third baseman is Wyatt Wilharm. Across the outfield, Clay Prell is in left. Nathaniel Jillick is at center. And the right fielder is Luke Clinton. The battery for the Blue Hawks on the mound, right-hander Trent Richter. And behind the plate is Cam Erickson. Blue Hawks in the white home uniforms today with navy blue trim. The Bruins showing their road gray with purple trim.
Ben Richter, no wins and five losses on the season. A pretty respectable 5.10 earn run average for that record. This is his ninth appearance on the season, his seventh start. He's thrown 30 innings, has allowed 30 hits, 24 runs, 17 of them earned, has struck out 20, and walked eight. That's the line for right-hander Trent Richter. Welcome aboard, everyone, to the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Those of you who are Bellevue fans know that we invite you to be part of our broadcast. Dickinson State fans, we invite you as well. If you're listening in and want to be part of our broadcast, send along a text message. My number is 402-515-7654. We'll give that number to you several times during the course of the broadcast. Brunch with the Bruins and the Blue Hawks today, 10 o'clock starting time. The reason we're starting so early in the day is Omaha South had the field scheduled for games later this afternoon. So doubleheader action today and tomorrow beginning at 10 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Here's Jake Lacey leading things off for the home team Bruins. First pitch lined right back through the box. Good job by Jake keeping the hands back and driving the off-speed pitch right back through the box. Yeah, first pitch slider to start the game. There we go. Sorry about that. First pitch slider to start the game. Uh, usually that's a good take pitch, but he was jumping all over it. Next up for the Bruins, the catcher, number 10, Logan Grant. Bruins doing well, hitting 310 as a team on the season. Lacey took over the team lead in the last game against Morningside, now hitting 376. And a couple of points higher than that as he gets that base hit to start the game. First pitch, fastball, outer half to Grant. I'm curious to see how much running uh, Bellevue will do against this pitcher. I mean, he's pretty quick to the plate, slide step all the time so far that I've seen. Quick move over to first base. Lacey back in plenty of time. A little bit of an unorthodox stance here with that lead leg way over to the third base side, throwing across his body. More pronounced as he comes set just at the belt. Richter delivers a breaking ball. That's also in the zone. 0-2 on Logan Grant. Grant, the team leader in runs batted in with 25. The team leader in home runs with 8, hitting 337 on the season. Let's see if he wastes a pitch here. Tried to get Grant to chase. Quick throw to first base. Good quick feet by Richter on his move over to first base. Yeah, his feet are extremely quick when he's picking off. It's going to be hard for uh, the base runners to read uh, when he's picking over. <clears throat> Awaiting the 0-2 pitch. That one's hit well to right field. Has some carry down the line. Will it stay fair? It's a foul ball and caught on a nice running catch out there by the right fielder, Luke Clinton. Thought it had a chance to go, but hit maybe a little bit toward the top of the bat rather than on the barrel. And a long out for the first out of the inning. Yeah, it was a break ball that just hung up there. He was just a little bit ahead of it uh, to pull a foul and knock. He didn't quite get it all. Out of the camera view. On our lens here, we, we try to get most of the field, but the extreme right and left field corners are out of view, so we'll try to just describe all the action there. Here's first baseman Alec Ackerman. Ackerman, first pitch swinging, lines it hard to left field. And the Bruins have runners at first and second. Two of the first three reach. Bruins have something going in the top of the first inning. Yeah, Ackerman stays hot, continues his, uh, his perfect. He's now 5-5. Five for five. He went 4-4 four four last game, and first base hit of the, this game right here. He's now 5 five for his last five. So uh, he's seeing the baseball really well. And for this Bellevue lineup, that's the main guy they really need to stay consistent with for this lineup. Make that 6-6 six for six as six he home six. run and his last at bat against Valley City. And then that perfect 4-4, four for four, as you mentioned yesterday, or Tuesday, against Morningside. So the pitcher and catcher will converse a little bit here to make sure they're on the same page in terms of signals now with the first base runner at second base. That'll be the first visit to the mound for Dickinson. Stephen Elsner awaits. Elsner also swinging a hot bat for the Bruins. 365. That puts him in third place in terms of the team leaders in that category. Trent Richter looks in, gets the signal from his catcher, Cam Erickson, and pitches a little up and in, ball one. 
Braxton Art, our umpire behind home plate today. We'll be looking over his shoulders all morning long. First game of the doubleheader, a seven-inning contest. Game number two, a nine-inning affair. Down the heart of the plate, one and one to count. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was looking off-speed. That was a pretty good pitch to swing, at, especially 1-0. Uh, so I wonder if he was looking possibly for off-speed pitch. Blue Hawks playing him slightly to pull. Excuse me, swing up the third base line. Third baseman charges, gloves, throws. And in time at first base to retire Steven Elsner. Nice play on the charge by third baseman Wyatt Wilharm for the second out of the inning. Runners advance to second and third on the play, and that will bring to the plate shortstop Brendan Luther. We saw Luther make some outstanding glove plays from a shortstop position in the series against Valley City and carrying that on on Tuesday against Morningside, also swinging the bat well, Luther hitting 329. RBI opportunity here in the top of the first inning. On the outside black for a called strike one. Yeah, this situation right here is why they moved Luther down into the lineup. He was hitting leadoff to start the season, uh, but they wanted to get him more RBI opportunities, and he's got one right here. 14 runs batted in so far on the season as Luther awaits. Upstairs on the fastball from Trent Richter. Richter, a 5'8 junior from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. About halfway between Bellevue and Dickinson State. A little off to the left, but <laughs> <laughs> our geography lesson for the morning so far. Breaking ball, stays low, bouncing in the dirt, blocked up by Cam Erickson. Again, that number, if you'd like to be part of our broadcast, 402-515-7600. Five four Bruin fans keep that handy all season long. Blue Hawk fans, join the party. Send along your message today. Let us know where you are. Any words to pass along that pitch just off the outside edge. So hitters count three and one to Brendan Luther. He'll be looking for a sweet pitch in his sweet spot. Yeah, he's got to be looking for one pitch that he can he can drive. Whether that's a hanging breaking ball or a fastball, looks like the catcher's set up outside right now. It is a fastball, and it does clip that outside corner. Good location by Richter. So that'll bring up a full count on Brendan Luther. Runners will not be off with the pitch as there's nobody at first. But they'll be on the move if contact is made. That extreme close beginning of the stance. The pitcher, that one's driven. The line drive in the left center field. That will score both runs easily. On way around first base, Brendan Luther on his way to second. That's where he'll pull up. A two-run batted in double by Brendan Luther gives the home team or the visiting team today. That's going to be hard for me to change. <laughs> As Jake Lacey and Alec Ackerman score on the double by Brendan Luther. Yeah, that was the exact same pitch that he threw on 3-1. Uh, same pitch, same location. So Luther already saw that exact same pitch, same location, everything. And he was able to put a really good swing on it to take it to left center field. Brendan runs over to first base side to pick up his protective glove as he becomes the base runner as Nick Grade, the Bellevue third baseman, steps in. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. So Bruins cashing in to the top of the first inning, courtesy of the double by Brendan Luther. For Luther, that is now RBI's 15 and 16 on the season. As the point you made earlier, Chris, a guy who has historically done a nice job of driving in runs. Easier to do that in the sixth hole yeah. than the leadoff spot. Yeah. More opportunities. Well, and they needed a leadoff hitter. I mean, losing Kanta Kobayashi for who you've been a staple there in the last two years for them. They were trying to find your the leadoff hitter to get this team going. And... Um, Luther to start the year was uh, doing a really good job of that position, but um, weren't quite getting as there's ball two or ball one, I believe, or no ball two. Um, <laughs> Go with that first thought. <laughs> um, so he, 
they weren't quite getting the production they wanted in the middle of the lineup, so they wanted to, they moved him down to get more production because uh, he is one of their best hitters on in this lineup. Here's the two one pitch from Richter. Chopped on the ground, backhanded grab by the shortstop. He'll try to make the play to third. It bounces off the third baseman glove. Here he comes for a home. Brendan Luther, the throw is, however, in time. And a collision at the home plate with Cam Erickton. And it looks like Brendan took that one mostly in the face. Yeah, he tried to push it there. The ball didn't, I mean, it went to the screen of the dugout. But, it's. I mean, it's not very far from the field of play to the dugout and so when he took off to home I mean I made a he had a quick play to get him at home but um, he was only three-fourths of the way there by the time the catcher got the ball he tried to slide around him and the tag it looked like it hit catcher just went to tag him and the way Luther slid um, and the catcher's reaction we tagged him right in the middle of the face it looked like right in the nose um, so hopefully he's okay looks like he's got a little bit of a bloody nose going on right now uh, so hopefully he'll be fine and um, no further issues. Hopefully he'll be attended too quickly by one of the members of the Bellevue training staff. I think Mike Livergood is here, also one of the uh, student members of the training staff as well. So for the Bruins in the top of the first inning, two runs on three hits. There were no errors and one man left on base. After a half, the Bellevue Bruins two and the Dickens State Blue Hawks coming to bat. All right, let's set the Bellevue Bruin defense. For game number one, across the infield, Alec Ackerman is at first base. C.J. Townsend is at second. The shortstop is Brendan Luther. Maybe if he comes out of the dugout here shortly, he is being attended to. Third baseman is Nick Grade. Across the outfield, it's Stephen Elsner in left. Jake Lacey in center field. And Anthony Lynn in right. The battery for the Bruins behind the plate is Logan Grant on the mound, right-hander Dustin Shorey. 3-1 on the season, a 3.76 earned run average. Let's find out a little bit more about Dustin Shorey. This is his eighth appearance of the season, all of them in a starting capacity. Give us some more stats there for, for Dustin. Yeah, I think you said this earlier, he's 3-1 on the year. Uh, he's got 40 innings, 31 hits, 20 runs, 17 of them earned, um, 15 walks. He does have 25 strikeouts on the year ERA. I believe you said this as well. Uh, 376, 376. Um, knowing, talking to pitching coach uh, Sean Malley, uh, he would like Shorey's strikeouts to get a little higher. Um, he's been doing um, with him, he's been doing a lot of stuff with him to get his velo even that much more. Um, so, he was able to get mechanically get him a little uh, more emphasized of him using his lower half. And he was able to get his velo up a couple miles an hour, which is kind of a big deal. Right? That's, a, yeah. that's a huge jump. Um, and he's still getting the movement on the base hole that he has been. He didn't lose any of that. Um, and so they're still trying to get things going with Shorey um, mechanically. And I think part of that is to... Uh, Part of that is the the accident that he had. I think some of it is still not all right uh, mechanically. All right, and it looks like Brendan Luther will stay in the dugout being attended to, and Nick Gravel will come on to play shortstop for the Bruins. There is the reentry rule in NAIA baseball, so Brendan could reenter later in the game if needed, but for right now, the Bellevue shortstop, number 14, Nick Gravel. So hopefully not anything too serious for Brendan. We'll try to update you if we do get an update ourselves. Leading off the bottom of the first inning for Dickinson, center fielder Nathaniel Jillick. Bill Mullins doing double duty here today, doing both the live stats and the PA. Hopefully they'll pay you twice as much, right, Bill? Here's the first pitch from Dustin Shorey on the outer half for a called strike one. Yeah, one thing with with Dustin, his fastball, it, it they're just it's never straight. Um, it, there's always movement, um, so nothing he throws is straight. So with this this Dickinson lineup, as their strike two, I believe that was a slider. This Dickinson lineup is gonna have a hard time figuring out what's coming. 
Um, and that's what makes him so that one, that's what makes Dustin so good is that you really don't know what pitch is coming because it all comes out of the same arm slot. It all comes out of the same arm path. So it's it's hard to pick up the baseball with him, which is why he is. is there oh, two pitch is a strike three called. Look like another slider. Yeah. So like, like I was saying, that's why it makes him so good. And that's why he's now 12 and one in his last two years with Bellevue. So Nathaniel Jillick is retired on the strikeout. Next up for the Blue Hawks, second, ba second baseman, Alberto Nieto. Nieto hitting 213 on the season. Tries to bunt his way on board, comes up empty. Strike one called. Jillick, the leadoff hitter, hitting 348. He goes down looking. He's the second highest hitter on the Blue Hawk roster. That pitch down low, one ball, one strike to count on Nieto. A disappointing three and 20 record for the Blue Hawks. That's hit in the air to right center field. On his way, however, to get there, closing the distance is center fielder Jake Lacey. He'll glove it right in front of the scoreboard for the first uh, second out of the inning. Need another sip of coffee to get my brain <laughs> fully functioning here. Uh, just just walking, watching Dixon State move around, watching how they act. They don't act like a 3-20 and 20 team, to be honest with you. Um, no, I don't know how their season went. I haven't, I don't, I don't know who, um, a whole lot about how their season has gone. But watching, it doesn't look like they, as their strike one, um, that they're acting like a three and twenty team. Their their presence, they they want to be here. They they're looking to take a win from Bellevue. Wyatt Wilharm, the next batter, he's the team leader in batting average, three eighty four. Swings and misses there. One ball, one strike. That, excuse me, two strikes to count. Where's that coffee again? Yeah, I need a double shot. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us this morning on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Temperature moving into the upper 30s. Fouled out of play right side. Not exactly ideal, but we're getting some baseball in, so that's the important thing. Slight wind blowing from the right field corner to the left field corner, only about 5 to 10 miles an hour. That's out of the southeast. 325 down the lines, about 380 to center field that one's chopped to third nick gray gloves it throws it on the money and the side is retired a one two three bottom of the first inning for the blue hawks after one complete innings of play the bellevue bruins two and the dickinson state blue hawks nothing that was a good start good inning by by dustin shorty right there uh was showing a lot of early in the count showing slider away fastball away slider away and then on that very last pitch he came in uh, with a fastball in that ran in on the hands uh, to set him set him up. That was a very good, uh, very good pitch plan right there by Dustin Shorty. Our first text message of the morning comes all the way from Bozeman, Montana. Hello from snowy Bozeman. Go Bruins. All right. Is that Parker McMahon's family, I believe? One of the Bellevue pitchers. Parker got some work in that midweek game against Morningside earlier today or earlier this week. As we head to the top of the second inning, it'll be Townsend, Lind, and Monroe, the first three hitters for the Bruins. CJ held the lead for a batting average for the team for a good chunk of the season, and because of the good efforts of Jake Lacey, Jake now a couple of percentage points ahead. A team-leading 12-game hitting streak for CJ Townsend. Thank you, Bill. We got Danny Sponberg down the end of the bench. He's doing the music today, the walk-up songs. Bill Mullins doing the live stats and PA. And you've got Chris Williamson and me, Mick Krupski, doing the broadcast. So glad that you're along on this cool morning. Second conference series of the season. Foul back to the screen by CJ, kind of a half swing. CJ hitting 376, 370, excuse me, on the season so far. Pitch misses away. Bruins 
on the inside corner. CJ turns away from it. Now one and two the count. Congratulations to pitcher Blake Crippen. Blake, with his victory last weekend, earned a tie for the career lead with 24 victories during his career at Bellevue University. Swung on and CJ thought he might have tipped it, but the umpire says no. The strikeout is rec recorded at first base. Yeah, I'm not sure if he thought he tipped it or if he thought the catcher caught it, but that, yeah, that's usually not like him. He usually doesn't do that. He's one of the hardest working guys on the team, so that's usually not like him. He might be a little frustrated with that, especially with that strike two call. Um, so he might be, he's been a little snake bit with these umpires lately. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's been getting uh, the, the pitches for balls and strikes as there's a uh, foul ball for strike one uh, that he feels like he probably should be getting. Anthony Lynn, the next batter for the Bruins. Lynn hitting, that's not right, let's get the right category here, sorry about that. 254 as his average has dropped a few points over the last couple of games. He's down 0-2 in the count here. Anthony in the eight hole in the Bruin lineup. Trent Richter in his second inning of work, the starting pitcher for Dickinson State. Two games today, two games tomorrow. Both doubleheaders starting at 10 a.m. Central Time. Little chopper going to be a tough play for either the third baseman or shortstop. It's the third baseman with a strong arm throw across the diamond. Nice play over there by Wyatt Wilharm for the second out of the inning. Yeah, that was a very good job of that third baseman running over to cut that baseball off. Because if he would have waited for that shortstop, it would have been a lot closer play. I don't know if they would have been able to get him if that shortstop would have had to make that play. Here's the ninth hole hitter for the Bruins lineup, Tyler Monroe, acting as the designated hitter today. Tyler has occupied that DH spot for the last several games. Backdoor breaking ball doesn't quite get there. Monroe hitting 323 as his average has gone up. One of the fastest guys on the Bellevue squad. That pitch on the top of the strike zone, one and one. A synthetic field turf field. In its entirety, a John Stella field at Brown Park. That one's fouled over the net, out of play. One and two the count. It's been a field to field for the last three years. For a while, it was just a field to infield. They completed the entire process a couple of years or so ago. This has been the home of the Bellevue Bruins for the last six years. That pitch low and in, count evens up two and two. Deuces wild situation, two balls, two strikes, two outs. We're in the second inning, Bruins up two to nothing. Again, Richter comes set, delivers the breaking ball down to the dirt, picked up by the catcher Erickson. Well, full count situation, top of the order awaits on deck for the Bruins in the top of the second inning. Richter, the big exhale, and delivers the pitch. Hit on the ground to second. Glove there, and over to first in time to retire Tyler Monroe. Second baseman Alberto Nieto on the play for the Blue Hawks. And the Bruins come up empty, three up, three down in the second after one and a half. The Bruins two, and the Blue Hawks nothing. That was a very good job by Richter right there in that inning. Uh, coming back after giving up two... Uh, they, this game could have got away from him with that bottom of the order. He did a very good job of going on the attack and trying to uh, let the bottom of the order uh, beat him, and he did a really good job of keeping him at bay going one, two, three. Dustin Shorey back to the mound for the Bruins. Dustin, a big guy out there on the mound, six foot five, 230 pounds out of Chandler, Arizona. Probably doesn't experience this weather too much playing baseball in the in the Phoenix area, but He's acclimated here for his second year as a Bellevue Bruin. He'll get his warm-up tosses as he gets ready to face the 4-5-6 hole in the bottom of the second inning. Dustin's put on a couple of uniforms during his college career. 
played at Mesa Community College down in Arizona. Also played at Texas Wesleyan University at Fort Worth. Second year as a Bellevue Bruin. He's a preseason All-American this year. First team North Star Athletic Association squad last year for the Bruins. An NAIA honorable mention. So the Bruins... As Chris mentioned, Bruins expecting a lot of good things for from him again this year. Leading off the bottom of the second inning, designated hitter Keanu Kalamayan. Shorey, like Richter, will work exclusively from the stretch. First pitch fastball off the outside edge. Calamayan, a 359 hitter on the year. One of four Blue Hawks above the 300 mark on the season in the starting lineup. Has that ankle and shin guard on his lead leg, his left leg, as he awaits the 2-0 pitch from Dustin Shorey. There's a fastball in the zone, 2-1. Shorey gets it to the plate on a fastball, upper 80s, low 90s. Comes set and delivers. That's nicely located outer half, two and two. Yeah, it's a good job coming back. Two straight balls to start the at-bat. He's coming right back with two straight strikes, even it up. That last fastball probably topping out in the low 90s. Tries to go with the slider. Backs Kalamayan off the plate, but misses the zone. Now full count on Keanu Kalamayan, leading off the bottom of the second inning. Bruins up two to nothing. Chopped down to third. Nick Gray has, has it come up on him. Deflects off his left arm. Official score. Bill's going to say too hot to handle a base hit. For Kalamayan, he'll be the leadoff guy on in the bottom of the second inning. And stepping to the plate, left fielder Clay Prell. Yeah, the ball was hit pretty hard. But if you, had, if you talk to Nick, he's probably going to be saying he probably should have made that play. So he's probably pretty upset about himself. I mean, especially being a national gold glove last year, he probably wants to make that play. Took kind of a funny hop. Yeah, usually did. you don't see a hop like that off the field turf. It's usually pretty consistent, but it's a low, low, and then came up on that third hop. He couldn't react in time. Prell shows bunt, puts it up the first base side. Shorey off the mound to barehand it. And his throw to first base hits the base runner. Let's see if we're going to get the interference call or not. And yes, we are. As Prell was running in fair territory, you got to get to the outside par, which is one of the craziest rules in baseball. But it'll bite the Blue Hawks here. So Prell is out on the interference call. Kalamayan will have to return to first base. Yeah, he was running in fair territory the entire way. I agree with you. I'm not a big fan of that rule because um, then it's almost like they expect you for your last step to cut back into fair territory for the base. I understand the rule, um, but I'm not a fan of it. Major League Baseball is changing it. They're now extending. They're still not going to put a line, but they're going to extend. I think two feet is what they're saying. You can run two feet on the inside of the baseline beginning this year in MLB, but the college rule has not changed I mean, as of yet. In my opinion, if you're on the line or if you're in the dirt path of the baseline, you should be fine. If you're running in on the grass or anything like that, that's completely different. Right. But if you're actually in the path, then you should be just fine as there's a foul ball for strike one. And that's what MLB is changing the rule to be. If you're in the dirt, you're considered to be okay. But nah, it comes back to bite the Blue Hawks there. Next batter, the catcher, Cam Erickson, fouls off the first pitch. 0-1 the count as Kalamayan gets his lead off of first base. Shorey delivers. That one's up and away. Erickson hitting 242. He's a junior. He, too, with that shin guard protector on the front leg. Quick throw over to first base by Shorey. Kalamayan back in plenty of time. Curious to see if there's going to be movement here uh, with the runner at first base. It looked like he was leaning towards second on that pickoff move. So 
It's a good hit and run count, 1-1. One, one. So we'll see what happens. Calamaya does have four stolen bases on the season. Blocked up by Grant. Squirts a little bit to his right, but no advance by the base runner. 2-1 the count on Cam Erickson. Erickson out of Centralia, Washington. So a lot of guys from the state of Washington on the ball field today. Several Bruins, couple of Blue Hawks. That one's wide, so three and one. Shory, a very efficient one, two, three, bottom of the first inning. One on, one out, three and one count in the second. That one's line hard and just fouled on the first base line. Erickson was waiting on a fastball there and turned on. In fact, turned a little bit too quickly as it skirts down foul down the right field line. So yeah. full count. Let's see if the runner's on the on the move here. Probably thankfully that ball went foul because that ball was hit very hard, and I don't think Ackerman saw it as it went by. <laughs> <laughs> the sun on the south side of John Stella Field at Brown Park, so it's not affecting anybody as of right now. And the pitch is outside, so the walk will put runners at first and second and an opportunity for the Dickinson State Blue Hawks. Now batting the first baseman, First baseman, C.J. Molina, steps to the plate. And that's probably been the biggest difference from last year to this year with, with Dustin Shorey is the amount of walks that he's had. Um, so he's been walking a, a little bit too many guys this year to start the season. Um, he's gotten that under control, uh, but... It's kind of becoming more of an issue, um, especially in big situations. So uh, we'll see if he can get that under control. Courtesy runner coming into the game for the catcher Cam Erickson is Trent Chavez, now into the game at first base. RBI opportunity for C.J. Molina. Dustin Shorey trying to work out of a little mini jam in the second inning. Looks the runner back to second and delivers. Fastball a little bit low, ball one. Molina hitting 191, playing first base today, listed as a utility player, means he can play a lot of different spots for the Blue Hawks. Fastball misses away, 2-0. and oh, As Chris just said, Dustin struggling a little bit with his control. Twenty-five strikeouts against fifteen walks on the season. Now way wide once again. A three and zero count. Yeah, it looks like his arms dragging a little bit. It's not quite all there right now mechanically. He's not as clean as he was in that first inning. Pounded the zone during that first inning, but throwing a lot of pitches in the second. And a four-pitch walk will load the bases. Calamayan advances to third, Chavez to second. Molina trots down to first. That'll bring to the plate the shortstop, Cole Simbab. And that'll bring Sean Malley out of the dugout for the Bellevue Bruins, the pitching coach on his way to the hill to talk with his big right-hander and several of the infielders as well. Yeah, he's probably seen the same thing I am. He's mechanically, he's not, he's, he's dragging a little bit. Uh, his lower half is getting ahead of his upper bodies to where they're not syncing up and him to be on time with, with at release point. So um, they're probably talking about that. He's probably talking about pitch plan, what to do um, to this hitter coming up to get out of this inning. Uh, but this is what I was talking about. Dickinson want, came here to win to win baseball games. Uh, you could see it when they were warming up. You know they weren't afraid coming in here, and the more momentum they can build, even if they just get one run here. The more momentum they can get, the more confident they can get, um, the scarier this team can be. So um, it's Shorey has to be really good right now at getting out of this jam. And speaking of Dickinson State, talked with Michael Dow, the head coach, before the game for the lineup. She said this be sure to say hello to Michelle and Kevin Dow, his parents listening in in Shakopee, Minnesota. So hello to the Dolls. As Dustin Shorey back to work. First pitch, a slider in the zone for a strike one call. 
Kind of unusual struggling to turn to the slider, but he must feel very comfortable with that pitch. Yeah, he may have a better feel because if you think about it, he hasn't thrown a whole lot of those this inning, and he threw a lot of them in the first. So um, that may be a pitch that he feels really comfortable with throwing. Base is loaded, one out. Bruins looking for a ground ball for a double play here. Kind of a weird... Simbab almost threw out that front leg to try to get hit by the pitch. One and one to count. Simbab hitting 150 on the season. Only one run batted in thus far. So he would love to get his team back into the game, trailing two to nothing. There's a fastball hit to the right field side. Anthony Lynn tries to get set up. He's under it. Now gets his momentum coming forward. Makes the catch. The throw to the plate. It's pretty deep, and it will not be in time. So a nice job by Cole Simbab to get some distance on that. He'll get a sacrifice fly and an RBI as Keanu Calamayan scores the first run of the game for Dickinson State. Yeah, that was a very good job. It was a fastball out over the plate. He did a really good job of just hitting it where it was at to get that run in. He didn't need to get a massive double. He didn't need to do any of that. They just wanted to get one run to cut this lead in half. Um, here's where they want to do damage right now. Trying to tack on a run with two outs. The batter is the right fielder, Luke Clinton, the nine-hole spot in the Dickinson State order. Clinton, 136 on the season. So Dickinson State with four guys above the 300 mark and then pretty much the rest of the lineup in the ones and 200s in game number one. Two to one, our score on that last play. Courtesy runner Trent Chavez tagged up and moved up to third. Another called strike. One and one on Luke Clinton. A little bit low, bounced up in front of the catcher, Logan Grant. Two and one. Top of the order on deck for the Blue Hawks. Shore gets his signal. Comes set. Fastball wide. This is a big pitch right here for Shore. He's got to get. He doesn't want to turn that lineup over with the bases loaded back to the uh, top of the order. So this is a big, big at bat right here for Dustin. A single, two walks, and a sacrifice fly. That's the composite of this half inning. And inside, though, another walk, third walk of the inning. That'll push Molina to second as Luke Clinton occupies first base. And back to the plate comes center fielder Nathaniel Jillick, the leadoff hitter for Dickinson State. Now batting for Dickinson State, the center fielder, number 14. Nathaniel. Dickinson State, the alma mater of Bellevue head coach Dwayne Monlux. He was a student there, played baseball, played football, played basketball. Also coached baseball there for a couple of years before becoming the head coach at Bellevue University. 14 years ago, first pitch low to Jillick. Not sure if the cold weather is affecting Shorey's ability to grip the baseball. Sometimes that happens when the weather is cool. I haven't seen him blowing on his hands a, a whole lot. Good pop on that fastball, throw behind at first base, the runner back in time. One ball, one strike to count. Yeah, I haven't seen that, but always trying to look for some explanation yeah. when you suddenly you, just, you lose control. Yeah. Jillick back in the box, slightly open batting stance. The set and the pitch. Down low once again. So two and one the count. Dustin's pitch count already up to 35 pitches through an inning and two-thirds. Very efficient in inning number one, but has thrown a lot in this second inning. Doesn't like the signal flash in from the bench. He'll step off the rubber and re reset the pitch clock. You get 20 seconds to deliver a pitch with runners on base. Down low, three and one, nowhere to put the hitter. As the bases are loaded, two to one our score. Bases juice, two outs. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Again, Dickinson State, the home team, as this series was supposed to have been played in North Dakota. 
but moved here because of the cold weather and snow up there. 3-1. Off the inside corner, Logan Grant held it there, hoping for the call, but doesn't get it. So an RBI on the bases loaded walk. And we're tied 2-2 two two as Trent Chavez scores the second run of the game. Molina to third, Clinton to second, and Jillick the runner at first. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're on the same page right now. Um, even after that mound visit by, by Sean Malley, it doesn't look like they're still on the same page. So I'm not quite sure if Shorey is feeling something different, if he wants something different. So that's why I think that's why Logan's, Logan's out there talking. They're trying to figure out to make sure that they're on the same page, because especially with that last at bat, I mean, it looked like Shorey was shaking basically everything that he put down um, until they could get on the same page. And that's that's kind of hard. That's something that you don't see very often. Uh, if you're on the same page in the first inning, you're usually going to be on the same page moving forward. Uh, but it doesn't seem like they're on the same page right now. Second official mound visit for the Bruins. Sean Malley was out earlier in this inning, and now the visit from catcher Logan Grant. As we still have the bases loaded, still have two outs, but now two to two our score. The batter, Albert Nieto, the second baseman, he flew out to center his first time up on a well-struck ball. On the knees with a fastball for a called strike one. Good start for Dustin Chory. One strikeout so far for Shorey. That was the leadoff guy of the game. That one's hit hard to center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Charging hard is Jake Lacey. His throw to home plate will be cut off. And with that single to center, Alberto Nieto gives the Blue Hawks a 3-2 to two lead. Yeah, right now everything is just over the middle of the plate. When he does throw a strike, I think he's trying to just throw strikes, throw it over the play because he can't really hit, he's not really hitting the corners like he usually does when he's going really good um, so right now everything is just over the middle that's very good at bat ninth batter of the inning third baseman Wyatt Wilharm steps in still juiced on the bases Merwin's looking to get out of this inning chopper to short Gravel shovels over to Townsend at second base and on the fielder's choice, the side is retired. The Blue Hawks pick up three runs on only two hits. There were three walks in the inning. No errors and three runners left on base. After two complete, it's the Dickinson Blue Hawks three. The Bellevue Bruins two. All right, time for the Bellevue Bruin bats to get back to work. As starting pitcher Trent Richter heads back to the mound after a nice long break as his teammates put a three spot on the board for him. Once again, let me give you that uh, text message number if you'd like to join our broadcast today. My number is 402-515-7654. So far, we've heard from Bozeman, Montana. And let us know where you're listening in today. Any other information you want us to send along, your greetings as well. As these two teams compete in the second weekend of the North Star Athletic Association regular season. Seven inning contest for game number one of this year's doubleheader schedule. No 10 run rule in effect in game number one. Game number two, a nine inning game. 10 run rule would be in effect after seven innings, should that apply. As the Bruins will send the top of the order to start this top of the third inning. Center fielder Jake Lacey steps to the plate. He singled and scored his first time up. Center fielder, number 20. Yeah, Bellevue's going to look to be getting those runs back uh, here offensively, so um, we'll see if they can do that. Lacey with 36 hits on the season. Down the third baseline, a backhanded play over there by Wilharm, and across the diamond, picked out at first base. One pitch, one out, five to three on the play. Yeah, right now the life coming out of Dixon's dugout is pretty high. Um, like I said earlier, you give a team like this confidence, you give this team confidence, they're going to build off of that and keep it going. So that was a huge inning momentum-wise for them. This will be even more momentum uh, on for Dickinson if he can get out of this without giving up a run. Logan Grant, the next batter for the Bruins. Backdoor breaking ball for a called strike one. Grant flew out deep to the right field corner his first time up.
hit down the third baseline. That's going to hook out a play. 0-2 on Logan. Chestermere, Alberta. That's in the Calgary area, the hometown of Logan Grant. Foul hard up the first base side. Talked to Logan before the game. He says, man, it's cold. I'm from Canada. <laughs> and I was wondering why I'm playing baseball. <laughs> also played some hockey as well. Off the outside edge. Good take. One and two the count. Logan did a lot of camera work for me earlier this year as the volleyball and basketball season. Got a chance to get to know him a little bit better. Awaits the one-two pitch from Richter. That one's hit back up the middle. Off the glove of the shortstop. Picks it, throws it. Won't be in time. E6 on the play, allowing Logan Grant to reach. He'll step out for courtesy runner. And courtesy running for the Bruins, number 25, Ukumi Maeno. And coming to bat, the first baseman, number 16. No, that's not Takumi. Number 12. That's number 12. Bryce Zimmer will be the courtesy runner. Correct. The courtesy runner is number 12, Bryce Zimmer. A rare hair from Bill Mullins. <laughs> So the courtesy runner steps in at first base on the E6. The next batter, Bellevue first baseman, Alec Ackerman. Ackerman singled and scored his first time up on a six-for-six six streak at the plate over the last three games. Alec now with 30 hits on the season. Misses away. Oh, they say clips the outside corner. Alec with a long look down to head coach Dwayne Monlux. Zimmer getting his lead off of first base. Throw over there back in plenty of time. Zimmer, a newcomer to the Bruin program this year. Does have six stolen bases, six out of seven in his stolen base attempts on the season. So a threat to run. One foot out past the cut out at first base. He's on the move on the hit and run, swing and miss on the breaking ball to throw nowhere near in time to get Zimmer as he adds one more to his stolen base collection. That'll be seven on the season. Yeah, Zimmer's probably the fastest guy on this Bellevue roster. He can absolutely fly. I'd like to see a foot race between him and, and Tyler Monroe. They'll, both of those guys can scoot. Yep. Richter back to work from the stretch. Again, that extreme close start to his motion. Another breaking ball. That one's in the dirt. One and two the count on Ackerman. Ackerman, the Colorado native in his final year of eligibility for the Bruins. Alex started his career at the College of San Mateo. They're going to appeal to the base umpire. They say no swing. The catcher wants a foul tip called. He's not going to get help from the, well, they're going to talk about it, but if he couldn't hear it at home plate, I don't think the base umpire could hear it out from his position. Uh, they're going to talk about it. Alec also played at San Jose State. University, so a couple different programs. Uh, they're going to let it stand as it was. Two balls, two strikes to count on Alec Ackerman. That was very close. I'm surprised they didn't ring him up on, on his swing. It was really close. It was probably borderline, but where um, each umpire, obviously the umpire behind the plate, he can't really see that. And where uh, Mike Andrick is out in the field, um, it's hard to tell. That one's hitting the air to the right field side. Right fielder, long way to go, heading toward the line on the run. It bounces off his glove. He's in foul territory. So it'll just be a foul ball. So the count will remain two balls and two strikes. Let's see if Ackerman can come back and get take some life out of that 
because um, that's a big that's a big drop in the in foul territory to give Ackerman another chance. So a couple of times Alec has gotten new life on this at bat. Luke Clinton, a long way to go from his right field spot, was about two or three strides in foul territory when it deflected off his glove. Trent Richter looking in, getting his signal from catcher Cam Erickson. Alec Ackerman patiently awaiting. Now he's ready to go. Pretty much a straight up batting stance for Alec. Another breaking ball. That one's lying hard to left, and it'll drop in front of the left fielder. Almost a deja vu copy of what Alec did his first time up. And talk about hot. Seven for seven for first baseman Alec Ackerman. Bryce Zimmer advancing to third on the play. Yeah, when you're going well, things are going in your favor. I mean, he had possible strike three rung up <laughs> and then drop foul ball so uh things good things happen when you're when you're going well so so bruins have runners at the corners now one out in the inning and the batter is cleanup hitter steven elsner well, bruins a chance to tie it or regain the lead in this top of the third inning Ball one is the first offering from Richter. He'll yeah, blow on his hand a little bit out there on the mound. Yeah, if Richter's able to get a ground ball here for double play, that is huge momentum-wise. Middle infielders, a double play depth. Chopped off the body of Elsner. It'll just be a strike. One ball, one strike to count. Looks like he's flying open a little bit at the plate, uh, getting really long with his swing. So he needs to stay a little bit more compact, just a little bit, so he can able to get that bat through the zone. Native of San Francisco, California, first year as a Bellevue Bruin. Steps back in. Down low with the fastball, two and one. Ackerman, the runner at first. Zimmer, the courtesy runner at third. Ackerman does have three stolen bases on the season. Down low again, the fake throw to first. So a hitter's count for Elsner at three and one. Dwayne Monlex runs through a series of signs in the third base coaching box. Everybody looking at him. He's done. Elsner's back in. Breaking ball misses away. And the Bruins have come back and loaded the bases in the top of the third. And Brendan Luther looks like he's going to re-enter into the game after being injured on that play at the plate. But first, a visit. From one of the assistant coaches at Dickinson State, let's give us an opportunity to do our coaches salute. Dickinson State head coach Michael Dow. We mentioned a hello to his parents in Shakopee earlier in the game. Dow in his fifth season at the helm. His assistant coaches are Daniel Rivera, Sagan Osborne, and Jackson Horner. Out of Dickinson, North Dakota, for the Bellevue Bruins, Dwayne Monlux. Now in his 14th season, associate head coach Mitch Schmidt in his 18th year. Pitching coach Sean Malley, 17 seasons, and assistant coach Richie Moore, 14 years. Since we mentioned Richie's name, let's also mention Richie's dad, Larry. He's here at all the Bellevue ball games. <laughs> Give him a tip of the cap for his support of the Bellevue program. All right, Brendan Luther back in. First pitch swinging off the end of the bat. Flared into shallow left field. Will it stay fair or foul? It's in foul territory. Nice running catch by the shortstop, Cole Simbab, to get over there and make the play. That almost looked like a changeup the way he was moving, uh, which would be the first time that he's shown that today. That's a big time to throw that out there because, you know, I don't think he was sitting changeup at all. He was sitting fastball. Uh, it's a very good pitch right there. So the onus now lies on Bellevue third baseman Nick Grade if the Bruins are going to cash in in the third. Base is loaded, two outs now. Grade, a fielder's choice, his first time up. First pitch, fastball on the knees, strike one call. So Luther delivered his first time up with a two RBI double, but flies out 
on his second chance to add runs to the board. Two runs on four hits for Bellevue, three runs on two hits for Dickinson State to this point of the game. Richter, chopper off the side of the mound over to shortstop Simbab, and Dickinson State may have caught a break there as it deflected off the side of the mound from straight up the middle a little bit more into the direction of Cole Simbab. He'll glove it and step on the base. Another fielder's choice for grade for the Bellevue Bruins. No runs on one hit. There was one air and three left on base. After two and a half, our score remains the Blue Hawks three and the Bruins two. Yeah, momentum-wise, that's huge for Dickinson State uh, to keep that lead, especially with in a seven-inning game. Um, game's almost half over right now. Um, so shorey has got to come back out here and find, figure out whatever uh, mechanically is wrong uh, in these warm-up pitches. I mean, he looks pretty good right now. Um, everything looks in sync. Um, but that's different when a hitter gets in the box. So uh, this first at-bat will be kind of a huge tell of if things have been figured out uh, and if he is able to get locked back in. So kind of damage control here for Shorey and the Bruins. Hey, the temperature's gone up to 40 degrees. We started, it was 35, so moving in the right direction anyway. Average high this time of the year in the Omaha Bellevue area is in the low 50s, so that's about where we're supposed to get to today. Leading it off in the bottom of the third inning, designated hitter Keanu Kalamayan. Kalamayan got a THTH his first time up. That one is driven hard to left field, and it just clears the yellow top of the fence. A solo home run for Keanu Kalamayan as he's two for two on the day. A fastball down the middle of the plate. Kalamayan turned on it and sent it for a ride. That is the second home run of the year for Kalamayan, and the 18th run batted in. He's the tops on the Blue Hawks squad. 15 home runs on the year now for the Blue Hawks. Bellevue, on the other hand, has 35 home runs, but a one to nothing home run lead for the Blue Hawks in this one. Here's left fielder Clay Prell, low and away. Yeah, it looks like Bellevue has people down, uh, guys down in the pin throwing. I can't quite see who that is with the batting cages in the way, uh, but looks like they're not taking any chances uh, this inning or possibly the next inning uh, to get through this game. Outside once again, 2-0 oh the count on Prell. Prell was involved in that sacrifice attempt his first time up today that resulted in a runner's interference. There's a nicely thrown fastball in the zone, two and one. Bellevue out hitting Dickinson, four to three, but trailing four to two on the score. Good fastball there. Evens the count at two and two. Shorey again looks in and gets the strikeout. Have to be recorded at first base. Grant over to Ackerman for the second out of the, excuse me, first out of the inning, second strikeout of the game for Dustin Shorey. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a huge strikeout right there, giving up that leadoff home run first pitch of the inning. Um, he, huge to come back and get that very next out, especially it being a strikeout. Cam Erickson, the Blue Hawk catcher, steps in, left-handed batter. As yeah, Shorey back to work. Erickson walked his first time up. Looks at a pitch up and away. Three runs in the second, one run thus far in the third for Dickinson State. Three wins and 20 losses on the season. That includes some games. I think it was six games that they played back in the fall portion. One and one to count now. So they're not showing that they look like a 3-20 and 20 team in today's game. We've talked about that a couple times no, already. They, They've come to play. They look really good today. Off the outside edge, 2-1. and one. 
you know, and, and I was talking about before the game mentally, you know, you see a team, you see their record, and you see three and 20 players. Be, coaches look at it differently. Coaches understand that, hey, we can get beat. Swing and a miss on the slider, 2-2. Two -two. But players go into that game saying, okay, they're three and 20. We, got, we probably have this one in the bag, this whole series. Um, but if you don't show up and play, any team can beat you. It doesn't matter what their record is. Any team, any sport. That's kind of the nature of the North Star Athletic Association. We cover basketball, we cover volleyball, we cover baseball, we occasionally do another sport as well, but almost any team can beat almost any other team on almost any given day. Got to be ready to play. Here's a full count upcoming in the battle between Dustin Shorey and Cam Erickson. Chopped on the ground a second. C.J. Townsend in the green of the outfield portion of the turf makes the play to retire Erickson 4-3 to three for the second out of the inning. <coughs> Next up, another left-handed batter for the Blue Hawks. First baseman C.J. Molina. Molina from Arizona, as is Bellevue pitcher Dustin Shorey. That one's hit well out to center field, but a couple of steps to his glove hand side by Jake Lacey, and the side is retired. The 1-1 on the solo home run by Keanu Calamayan. No errors, nobody left on base. After three complete, it's the Dickinson State Blue Hawks four, the Bellevue University Bruins two. Yeah, let's see if uh, Richter can keep this momentum going, especially with the bottom of the order coming up. Um, but I, no, one, no one, Coach Monlux, he needs, to, he wants to get production out of the bottom of the order. Outside of uh, C.J. Townsend, who will be leading off the inning, I believe, um, the bottom of the order needs to be more productive uh, to get it back to that top of the order with, where, you know, when you got Ackerman and Luther and um, Lacey, them all coming up, uh, and Logan. The bottom of the order needs to get on base, need to create some type of havoc, put some more pressure on, on this Dickinson State team to to get them out of rhythm. Because right now their rhythm is really good. Uh, they they don't look they look like the team that has played um, a really tough non conference schedule uh, right now, just the way they're flying around, the way they're acting. Um, everything that they're doing right now, they look very locked in and ready to go. They have all the confidence in the world that they can win this game. Bruins hoping for a change of scenario here over the final four innings of today's contest. It'll be the 7-8-9 part of the order, as you said. Townsend, Lynn, and Monroe trying to get on base ahead of the top of the order. Here's second baseman, C.J. Townsend, to start it out. A strikeout victim his first time up. One strikeout so far for Trent Richter, looking for his first win of the season. CJ steps in and awaits the first pitch from Richter. Breaking ball for a called strike one. Yeah, it's a pretty good take right there by CJ. It was a breaking ball. Even though it was up, it was on the outside corner, he wasn't going to be able to do a whole a lot of damage with that pitch. Slightly open batting stance on the start for CJ. They'll appeal to first base. They say no swing, one ball, one strike to count. Is that breaking ball? Misses off the outer half. Right now, I mean, Richter's doing a really good job. He's throwing a lot of breaking balls in the outside corner. He's not really giving them a whole lot uh, to swing at that's over the plate. There's one, but it's ahead on the swing, foul up the third base side. One and two on Townsend. If I'm CJ, I'm looking for another slider on the outside corner. That's where he's been most effective today, and it looks like the catcher's setting up out there th out right now. Again, a breaking ball. That was hit to the right side by Townsend, right fielder on the charge. Clinton throws a dive. And makes the catch. Good hustle by Lou Clinton to cover some territory and take a hit away from C.J. Townsend. Now batting the right fielder, number 17, Anthony Lynn. 
Yeah, again, that was a breaking ball on the outside corner of the plate. And CJ, I think he was looking for that, but it didn't get a he didn't get a great swing on that pitch. Um, didn't hit it very hard. Right fielder made a great play diving. Next up for the Bruins, right fielder Anthony Lind looks at a fastball on the knees. Strike one call. Richter back to work on the mound for the Blue Hawks. That one's hit to right center field. Again, Clinton on the move, this time moving over towards the scoreboard. He'll make another running catch. It's the Lou Clinton show in the top of the fourth inning as he has recorded the first two put off, putouts of the inning off of Bellevue Bats. Two, Tyler. Tyler Monroe to try to keep the inning alive for the Bruins. Bellevue's designated hitter grounded out his first time up. Outside wide on the first pitch. Monroe out of Lincoln, Nebraska, played his high school ball at Norris High School. He too has been in several different schools, Northeast Community College, Southeast Community College, and the University of Central Arkansas last year. 2-0, and both pitches missing away. Yeah, he's just living away 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 he'll show in periodically you know with uh with a fastball but right now he's just hammering the outside corner of each hitter catcher cam erickson shaking his wrist don't know if he's just cold or may have jammed his wrist on trying to catch one of those pitches pitch at the top of the strike zone two and one again that's that show in pitch for strike um so I would look for him to go back out, whether that's another breaking ball or a fastball in the outside corner. Erickson setting up toward the outside half, bunted up the third base, a perfect spot on the bunt by Monroe. Nothing that Erickson can do about it. So Tyler Monroe with a little push bunt up the third base line keeps the inning alive and takes it back to the top of the order. Yeah, they had no chance. I mean, <laughs> you literally can't set it down better than that. And then with, with Monroe's speed, there's no shot. If you would put some tape and a letter X, bunt it to this spot, that would be yeah. the exact spot you would want it to go where the defense could do absolutely nothing with it. So back to the top of the order for the Bruins, center fielder Jake Lacey. One for two today, single to start the game. Pitch misses low and away. A single and a ground out, the body of work so far for Jake. Jake, the junior out of Gillette, Wyoming. Coal country up there in the Cowboy State. A little number back to the mound. Well, Erickson, the catcher, will bounce out to make the play. Two to three to retire the side for the Bruins in the top of the fourth inning. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and one base runner left on. Bruins have left five on the bags through the first four innings and trail it by a score of four to two against the Blue Hawks. Again, the, the hitters have to make an adjustment coming, you know, that next, this next inning uh, for Bellevue. Everything is away. Everything is away, 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 away. So if you look away, it, he's not throwing, Richter's not throwing 90 plus. He's throwing mid to upper 80s. It's not going to overpower them. Um, but they just, their adjustments right now, they're not making adjustments enough offensively to do a whole lot. Um, and give credit to Rick. That's, that's credit yep. to, to Richter. Uh, he's doing a very good job. He's hitting his spots. Um, he's not giving them a whole lot to do a lot of damage with. Um, so that's credit to him. That's credit to this pitching staff, this pitching coach, for a great game plan right now. And he's executing it with perfection where you have short, with, you know, with Dustin, you know, he's, he's, he's got four walks, four walks in the second inning, gave up a home run already. Um, his execution for his game plan isn't where it needs to be to get these hitters out well again the Bruins hoping for a change of change of scenario here as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning the at-bats for the Blue Hawks will be Simbab Clinton and then the top of the order here's shortstop Cole Simbab sacrifice fly RBI his first time up doubling his season run batted in total He'll lead it off.
Chori starts ahead. A good sign for the Bruin right-hander. Simbab from Barstow, California. Now 0-2. A little bit more movement on that pitch. More of a slider than a cut fastball. At least from my yeah, perspective here. Slider. So far he looks good in these first two pitches. Waste pitch trying to get Simbab to chase on that one. He'll hold off. Dickinson State lineup like the Bellevue lineup from all over the mostly western half of the United States. There's a called strike three. That slider gets Simbab looking for the first out of the inning. Third strike out of the game for the Bruin right-hander. The next man he'll face is right fielder Luke Clinton. Clinton walked his first time up. Yeah, that first batter sure he just looked like he is throwing more free. Uh, mechanically, he looks more free, more open with, with, with his movements. Attempted bunt by Clinton, kind of. Wasn't, wasn't quite sure he wanted to commit to that or not. Anyway, it fouled off the catcher, Logan Grant. Looks like Logan's okay, but home plate umpire walks the ball out to Shorey to give Logan a couple extra seconds to recover. Four consecutive retired now by Dustin Shorey and his Bruin defensive teammates. Another called strike, 0-2. So after allowing the solo home run to Keanu Kalamayan, four consecutive retired by Dustin Shorey. Two of them by strikeouts. And make that one more, the swing and the miss by Clinton. So now five consecutive retired as the Blue Hawks back to the top of the order. Center fielder Nathaniel Jillick. Yeah, he, he looks really good so far this inning. Let's see if he can keep it going with this back to the top of the order. Jillick from Dickinson, North Dakota. Home of Dickinson State, obviously. Fastball just misses off the inside edge. That pitch on the inside corner. So just a, an inch or so difference on each of the last two pitches. One and one to count on Jillick. Jillick drew a bases loaded walk to pick up an RBI his last time up. Swing and a miss. Nice quick movement on that breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Grant setting up over the outside half. That's where the pitch goes. A swing and a miss. So bang, bang, bang. A three strikeout inning for Dustin Shorey. Looks like whatever mechanical troubles were bothering him in the last couple of innings are now gone. Six consecutive retired on a three up, three down inning. Yeah, he just looked more free that inning. Uh, free flowing. It didn't look like he was. It didn't look like he was uh, kind of looking or hoping to throw a strike, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Combo. It looked more free. He looked more into it. You know, it didn't look like he was trying to make the ball move. He was just letting it work. So that's very good to see, you know, especially after, you know, a rough couple innings for second and third. Uh, but this lineup's got to get going, plain and simple. Um, sure, he could not give up another run, and if this lineup doesn't do anything, they still lose. So right now, they have to make an adjustment. It looks like they're actually meeting right now. Uh, but they got to make some adjustments here with, you know, there's three innings left. They have nine outs left to go. Um, if they don't make an adjustment, they're going to lose. And so what type of adjustment is Richter going to make on the mound here? Um, if he, is he going to keep the same game plan because it's been working for four innings? Yep. Um, or is he going to mix it up now and kind of do something different? Um, so it's kind of a chess match for these next three innings. And um, so we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. Very good analysis. So keeping the hitters off balance so far. Trent Richter back to work in the top of the fifth inning. He'll be looking at Grant, Ackerman, and Elsner to start things off for the Bruins. 
Bellevue hoping for a lot more than just those three to get back into this game, currently trailing four to two. First pitch, fastball for a called strike one on Logan Grant. As a batter, I think I would be kind of bothered by the beginning of this motion for Richter. I mean, his left foot is almost facing right at third base. Grant holds up. They'll appeal first base. No swing. One and one to count. You almost hardly ever get that appeal call when there, there's only one umpire at first base and a left-handed hitter. There's, he can't, unless the bat is pointing at him out <laughs> through the zone, he's not going to be able to make that call. Very hard to see. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Now one and two. Logan Grant leading off the top of the fifth inning. Bruins the visiting team today as this series supposed to be played in Dickinson but because of the cold snowy weather there moved here to Omaha. Logan 0 for 2 so far today. Swing and a miss. Tagged by the catcher on the short hop. So the first out of the inning is the strikeout. Just the second strikeout of the game for Trent Richter but you don't have to strike them all out to be effective yeah. pitcher. I mean, right now the only one who's looking really good in this lineup is is coming up to bat right now and that is Alec Ackerman the Colorado native steps in again a seven for seven hitting streak for the Bruins first baseman first pitch pushes him off the plate ball one right now that actually looks like Richter's kind of changed up his playing a little bit you know he started Logan off fastball inside now he started Alec fastball inside there's a fastball in the zone, one and one. My working from the third base side of the pitch up rubber, pitcher's rubber, excuse me, and then with that closed stand, he really has a, a severe angle coming in on these right-handed batters. Yeah, he's hiding the ball really well. There's a breaking ball that foul back to the net. That was over the over the plate. Alec, I think, probably would have liked to have that one back. Now one and two the count. Erickson sets on the outside play. That one's hammered to center field. Center fielder going back, going back to the warning track, falling down, can't make the catch. Ackerman around second base. He's going to try for third. And he'll slide in safely as Alec Ackerman with a one-out triple off the center field fence. Another five feet, it would have been a yard. So about 375 feet or so out there. So maybe that'll put a little jolt into the Bruins' offense. So now make it eight hits in eight consecutive at-bats for Alec Ackerman. Yeah, it looked like the center fielder was tracking it really well, and then at the very last second, he kind of got turned around, and I don't, know, I don't know if he's got his feet tangled up um, or if he wasn't expecting the fence. Here's Steven Elsner, RBI situation, and he'll take that one off the front shoulder on the hit-by-pitch. So Bruins have runners at the corner and one away. And as we look down Dickinson State bullpen, there's a couple of guys scrambling down there. Nobody has started throwing yet, but a couple of guys have taken off jackets. So we'll see if head coach Michael Dow maybe get the bullpen going here. As this is the third time through the order for the Bellevue hitters against starter Trent Richter. And now Dwayne Monlex will take the slow walk down the third baseline, pulling his lineup card out of his back pocket. We may have a pinch runner at first base for Steven Elsner. And it will be number 12, Bryce Zimmer will come on as the pinch runner for Steven Elsner. Zimmer was in earlier as a courtesy runner, but he can go into the game here. He will no longer be able to serve as a courtesy runner, but he is now the pinch runner for Elsner. All right, we've got our lineup updated. The batter is shortstop, Brendan Luther. Luther's been up twice with guys in scoring position, delivered in the first inning with two runs batted in. Ball in the dirt, a good read by Zimmerer. He'll head down to second base on the wild pitch. Yeah, that's a great read. The ball didn't get away very far from the catcher, and he, he read it, ball and dirt, right away and didn't even hesitate. So two runners in scoring position. A base hit here could tie the game. 
Luther with two runs batted in, the only two for the Bruins so far today. That one's going left field. That'll score at least one, maybe more. Left fielder's still going. That one's off the fence. Again, Zimmer got a great read on the ball from his spot at second base. And another two-run batted in double for Brendan Luther. He's a, a total all four of the Bellevue runs today. So Ackerman scores, Zimmerman scores, Luther in scoring position himself at second base. So a great job of hitting opposite field by Brendan Luther. Yeah, right now, I mean, he's, his, he's two for three right now, I believe, right? Yep, yep. And, you know, he's had RBI opportunity every single at-bat. You know, he didn't get it done in the second at-bat, uh, but he made for made up for it here. I mean, the, again, I'm, I'm, I'll say it again, that's why they put him in that spot. 18 runs batted in on the season now for Brendan as third baseman Nick Gray awaits, trying to knock him home. Breaking ball misses away. And a right-hander is up and throwing in the Dickinson State bullpen. So the Bruin bats. Two hits and a hit by pitch in this inning. Bruins out hitting the Blue Hawks, seven hits to three. Grade shows bunt, pulls it back, takes it for a called strike. One and one to count. Yeah, I don't know if he was actually looking to do that, looking to drag bunt, or is that just for show? Because uh, usually he, he's a really good bunter, and usually when he shows, he usually does it. Infielders playing in a little bit at the corners after that show bunt. Pitch is down low, now two and one. Shortstop Cole Simbab trying to keep the runner close at second. That's Brendan Luther. Two big hits on the game so far for Luther. Here's a breaking ball that drops into the zone. Good horizontal and vertical movement on that from Richter. I think uh, he's pretty upset with himself. He should have pulled the trigger on that Hagen breaking ball. The infielders back to their regular positions now with two strikes on grade. That pitch upstairs. Count will go full. C.J. Townsend on deck for the Bruins. Nick Grade, the man at the moment, in the batter's box. Erickson sets up. Richter delivers the pitch. It's a breaking ball. Hit the center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Here comes Luther around third base. He'll be held there by Dwayne Molex. He didn't get a real good read on that line drive back through the box. Uh, Nick Grade will return Bellevue runners to the corners with that base hit to center. Yeah, he had to freeze a little bit on that line drive. Uh, not sure where the second baseman was playing. Uh, so he had to freeze with only one out. But, again, it's going to come down to the bottom of this order. You know, like I talked about last inning, it's going to be bottom, bottom of this order. They need production. I know Coach Monlux wants more production um, out of the bottom of this lineup. And again, we'll have a visit from the coaching staff. That's head coach Michael Dahl on his way out to the mound to talk to Trent Richter. Trying to discuss the situation with his team. Bruins have runners at first and third, so Bellevue could have a lot of different things they could do here. And we'll have a call to the bullpen. That'll be the end of the day for Trent Richter. Richter cannot figure in the win as it's tied four to four. The two base runners are on, on base are his responsibility as we have a new pitcher coming to the mound for the Blue Hawks. It looks like it's number 27, Patrick Dietz, will come on in relief for starting pitcher Trent Richter. Dietz is a six foot one junior out of Manhattan, Montana. He'll get his eight warm up tosses and then he'll get to work. First batter he will face will be CJ Townsend with the Bruins a two spot in the first, a two spot here in the fifth, hoping to regain the lead. Bellevue out hitting Dickinson eight to three. We're tied on the scoreboard at four. 
I wouldn't be surprised if you see Coach Von Luck squeeze with, with CJ up. He's really good bunner. He can handle the bat really well. Um, Coach Von Luck loves to do some sort of squeeze, possibly safety squeeze, um, especially with runners at first and third with one out. Um, so don't be surprised if you see that coming up with CJ. A little bit more information about Patrick Dietz. He's a junior. This is his seventh appearance on the season. He has three starts, the rest in relief, 12 and two-thirds innings on the season. A very high earn run average at 14.92. He's allowed 18 hits in those 12-plus innings. 21 earned runs, has struck out 16, and has walked nine. Patrick Dietz on the hill for the Blue Hawks. And let's see if Chris's prediction comes true here about the squeeze play with Bruins second baseman, C.J. Townsend. You do it on the first pitch? No, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't do it on the first pitch. I would give C.J. a swing. Um, I would give him, you know, a swing or a strike uh, to see if he can't do some more damage than just one. Um, I would give him, yeah, like a swing. Probably, if he gets a strike... Ball one outside on that fastball. I'd probably do it after the strike, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't take the bat out of his hand right away. Long look down to head coach Dwayne Monlux in the third base coaching box. Number 19 for the Bruins. Getting close to those number of years. 14 years, five more, and he'll have, match his jersey number. Here's the 1-0 pitch showing, but pulled back and a strike called. Third baseman. Wyatt Wilharm was playing in on the play as soon as he saw C.J. show bunt. He came charging hard, so if C.J. does bunt, he wants to maybe push it up the first base side. Yeah, and that's what a safety squeeze is for. Uh, push it towards second base that can get beyond the pitcher. One and one to count. Breaking ball off the outside corner, two and one. So count in advantage to the hitter now. This is a good count to squeeze in. Fastball count. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised for a squeeze right here. Townsend awaits. Shows bunt. Puts it down. Suicide squeeze. A runner will score easily. As the play made by Dietz over to first base. So C.J. Townsend will get credit for the run batted in and a sacrifice. And the Bruins with Brendan Luther scoring on the play. Take a 5-4 to four lead. Nick Great advancing to second. And the batter will be right fielder, Anthony Lynn. Bruins still have a chance to score more in the inning. Three already across. Yeah, that was, that was a great job by uh, CJ right there. When, you know, when you squeeze, it doesn't matter where you bunt. It doesn't matter where the, what the pitch is. Um, you just have to get it down in fair territory because the runner from third is already moving. First pitch fastball up and away. Lynn 0 for 2 today, a ground out and a fly out. Nick Grade in scoring position at second, taking a lead. Second baseman Alberto Nieto trying to keep him close at second. That creates a little bit more of a hole on that right side. On the inside corner, one and one. <coughs> Catcher sets up on the outer half. Breaking ball goes that way, but it's upstairs. Foul right side by Lind. Two, two, two. Oh, sorry, two, two. I probably wouldn't be surprised if I see, uh, if you see a slider right here. Um, I would be kind of surprised if you see a fastball, unless it's on the outside corner. Um, but that's where Erickson is setting up, outside corner, breaking ball, line hard, off the glove of the first baseman, Anthony Lynn hustling down the line. He'll make it safely on the play. Base hit, Billy. Another too hot to handle as that one deflected off the glove of the first baseman, C.J. Molina. Looks like Molina's going to need a second as it got the glove and a piece of the body of the first baseman. It almost looked like it 
he went to scoop it and he scooped up too soon and it went off his shin or ankle. I mean, he's limping pretty good. So yeah. I think it got more body than glove. Than glove. Molina, Molina and Lynn laughing at it over there at the first base bag. It was a tough play. It was yeah. hit over in the in the four hole and it was hit hard. So it, it was a tough play for him to make. Deets, the pitcher, getting over to cover on the play, but Anthony Lynn just beat it out. So now runners at the corners once again, and it'll be up to designated hitter Tyler Monroe to cash in another opportunity for the Bruins. Bruins lead it five to four. We're in the top of the fifth inning, and the Bruins, the visiting team. Runner goes, fake throw, nothing happening. So it's uncontested stolen base for Anthony Lind. So two runners in scoring position for Monroe. This would help the Bruins' cause. Provide a little bit more than the current one-run lead. Hit in the air to center field. Left fielder drifting over now will make the play instead of the center fielder. That's Clay Prell calling it. And the side is retired. So Bellevue leaves two but scores three. Three runs on four hits. There were no errors. Two left on base as we head to the bottom of the fifth. That's the Bellevue Bruins five. The Dickinson State Blue Hawks four. Yeah, that was a good job by Bellevue coming back. Um, you know, it started with, again, the two best hitters on the team, Ackerman and Luther. You know, Ackerman got it started with that triple with one out, and then Luther got that big RBI double again. And then it just kept going from there. He, and then CJ with that squeeze bunny, he was able, Bellevue was able to get production out of that bottom three, uh, which if that bottom three can starts to get going to get more production for this lineup, um, then it's just a lot less stress on Coach Monlux <laughs> that he <laughs> has more guys to play with um, that can get more production out of this lineup and keep it going to get back to that top. One more text message in the queue. Let's go Bruins from the Williams family listening in in Missouri. That's Tehran's family. Tehran, one of the core of Bruin relievers. He's done a nice job on the season. In fact, I think Tehran has the lowest earned run average of any of the Bruin pitchers, let me double check that. Yeah, 1.04. Second year in the program for Tehran. Glad you guys are listening in. Again, we'll give out that text message number for you. 402-515-7654 is the number. If you'd like to be part of our broadcast, let us know who you're listening, who you're rooting, where you're listening in, and any other words of wisdom you want us to pass along. It'll be the second baseman, Albert Nieto, will start things off in the bottom of the fifth inning. For the Blue Hawks, Dustin Shorey back to work once again with the lead. First pitch, misses low and away. Shorey's got to have another... May, not a one, two, three inning, but he's got to have a, you know, a quick uh, not letting him score and keep that momentum that Bellevue just got. Momentum from the offense, and he's done well riding the ship as he has retired the last six batters in a row he has faced, including four strikeouts. And he has settled down quite a bit after that second and third inning, mostly second inning. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the inside corner, one and two, Nieto. Did not like the call. Uh, if looks could kill, but <laughs> that facial expression as he backs out. Now back in, one and two. Singled his last time up and got an RBI. That one's hit well down the left field line. It's a fair ball hit right on the paint line. Steven Elsner giving chase, but nothing he could do about that one. As Alberto Nieto starts off the inning with a double. Yeah, it wasn't hit very hard. And it, like you said, it landed right on that line. So uh, when things are going good, like with Ackerman for Bellevue, when things are going good, you're going to get breaks like that. Go oh, now Shorey and the Bruins trying to work around that leadoff double. Here's three-hole hitter, third baseman, Wyatt Wilharm. Wilharm 0 for 2. Look to see a bunt here uh, to get that tying run 90 feet away. Alec Ackerman, the Bruin first baseman, playing in on the grass. Nick Grade at third as well. Doesn't show bunt. Pitch misses off the inside edge. 
Wilharm, the leading hitter, 384 coming into today's contest. Second leading RBI guy for the Blue Hawks. The step off to look the runner back to second. Keanu Kalamayan on deck. Kalamayan a two for two day, including a solo home run his last time up. That one's hit in the air to left field. Steven Elsner going back at the warning track and he's gonna run out of room. A two run home run for Wyatt Wilharm as the Blue Hawks regain the lead. They get it right back after the Bruins got it in the top half of the frame. Second home run of the game for the Blue Hawks. Wyatt Wilharm and Keanu Kalamayan, the Blue Hawks lead it by a score of six to five and that's gonna be the end of the line for Dustin Shorey today as Dwayne Monlux heads to the pitcher's mound. So Shorey had regained his form with six consecutive outs but gives up a double and a home run to start this fifth inning as the Blue Hawks back on top. Yeah, it was a fastball that was up and he hammered it. Um, Shorey didn't have his best stuff today. You know, Started off good, first inning, and then kind of second inning, it wasn't able to get back on track um, completely and maintain it. He would, you know, for an inning, and but he wasn't able to maintain it throughout the game. Um, and that's kind of what got him in trouble. You know, he had four walks, I believe, all in the second inning. Um, didn't have his best stuff. And that's going to happen. I mean, you're not going to be perfect every single game. Uh, I, knowing Dustin, he thinks he should be. He, you know, he, he has a lot of high expectations for himself. Um, but as the number one arm on a pitching staff, you should have high expectations yep. for yourself. Um, and you're not going to be perfect. So now it'll be up to his teammates to try to salvage the game. This call to the bullpen goes to right-hander Jace Wessels. Wessels a junior. This is his sixth appearance on the season, a 1-0 record. Jace has only worked four innings on the season. Has allowed four hits, two runs. A 4.50 earned run average for Jace Wessel as he comes on in relief of Dustin Shorey. Jace out of Clarkston, Washington. The first man he will face is cleanup hitter, designated hitter, Keanu Kalamayan. Kalamayan two for two. Two runs scored, a single and a solo home run. The windup and the pitch. Breaking ball for a called strike one on the first pitch from Jace Wessels. Swing and a miss. 0-2, Wessels working ahead. We saw Jace work one inning on Tuesday against Morningside. Coming out of the bullpen, doing the same thing here. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. Logan Grant blocks it, picks it, throws it. And the first out of the inning is the first strikeout for Jace Wessel. Yeah, good job coming in, uh, getting that leadoff hitter. I mean, it's for him, it's like he started a new inning. You know, he came in, nobody out, able to throw out of the wind up, nobody on. Uh, so it's to him, he's brand new inning. Next batter for the Blue Hawks, left fielder Clay Prell. First pitch fastball, just a little bit low. That looked like a good location right there. Jace working quickly. Top of the strike zone, one and one the count. A mostly sunny day that's helped warm things up despite the cool temperature. Little chopper back to the mound. Wessels feels it on the second hop. Underhand toss over to Ackerman at first and so quickly two away after two runs scored. And then as he steps on first base, Clay Prell goes down. I think he hit the side of the base and may have twisted an ankle. He's still down being attended to by one of the assistant coaches and also on Mike Livergood, Bellevue's athletic trainer running out there as well. 
We'll swing over there just a little bit. Not a whole lot to see other than. Yeah, Mike. I'm not sure if he even got to the bag, to be honest with you. Um, it looked like he was falling down as he was coming to the bag. So I don't know uh, if there's if it's ankle, knee, but he went down pretty quick. Um, it almost looks like Livergood's messing around with his knee, um, which isn't good. That's, no. That's not a good thing when you're running in a straight line and um, something's wrong with your knee. I don't know if he, like, hyperextended or, or what. So hopefully he's able to be okay because that's never a good sign. Looks like he's favoring that right ankle area as he hobbles on back over to the Dickinson State bench. We'll get the camera lined up once again so we get the bases in the picture. So Prell, the left fielder, looks like his day may be done or at least the last couple of innings of this one as he'll be attended to over on the bench. With two away now, the base is empty. The catcher, Cam Erickson, will step to the plate. Erickson with a walk and a ground out on the day. Jace Wessels back to work. Third man he has faced. First pitch is up and away. Breaking ball again. A little outside of the zone. Six runs on five hits for Dickinson State. Five runs on nine hits for Bellevue as we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Sky high fly ball on the infield. Who's going to want to have fun with this? It looks like Nick Grade, the third baseman, will call it. And right on the chalk line, or paint line actually, he'll make the catch. So Jace Wessel comes in, does a nice job. Gets all three hitters he faced in order. Two runs on two hits. There were no errors. Nobody left on base. Five innings in the book. Two innings to go. Dickinson stayed on top by a score of six to five. New pitcher for Dickinson State is number 22. Alex Stevens comes on as the third pitcher of the day. So Dietz, a brief stint on the mound. Now it's up to Stevens. Alex Stevens, a 7.71 earned run average. He's a sophomore. This is his fifth appearance on the year. No wins, one loss in four and two thirds innings. He's allowed eight hits, four earned runs has struck out six and has walked two. Alex Stevens now on the hill for the Blue Hawks. Blaine, Minnesota, the hometown of Alex Stevens. As the Bellevue Bruins sent eight batters to the plate in the last inning, hoping to put some more runs on the board in the top of the sixth. It'll be the top of the order for the Bruins. Yeah, let's see if the top of the order can keep their hot streak going, you know, as they have uh, seven of the nine hits. Uh, for for this Bellevue lineup, so let's, you know, this is a good time to be back at the top of the order uh, late game. In the late game situation, you, you know, with Ackerman coming up, granted he's got a third of the hits right now, and Luther, <laughs> you know, him and Luther have five of the nine hits, so um, it's a good time to have these guys coming up. Stevens kind of a short armor on the mound, getting his warm-up tosses as his teammates in action around him. And let's see, it looks like we have a new guy out in left field. Oh, well, wait a minute, no, Jellick. Look, Jellick moved from center to left. Who's the new guy in, Bill? put the field glasses on out in the center field. All right, so into the game, number 23, Moses Dokes is now in center field.
At the plate for the Bruins, Jake Lacey. First pitch, strike one. Stevens working from the stretch. That one's hammered hard, but it's going to go foul up the left field side by Jake. Count goes to 0 and 2. So Moses Dokes, the new player, he'll be in center field for the Blue Hawks. Foul back against the netting. Count remains at 0 and 2. Good location as fastball up. He threw it right where the catcher wanted. Let's see if he goes breaking ball down and away. You got him. You got his eyes looking up, reacting up. Uh, down and away is a good location. Lacey trying to get things started on a positive note for the Bruins in the sixth. That breaking ball misses low. I think if he started out a little bit higher, I think he could have got Lacey swinging at it. But that's that's a great execution. Stevens gets his signal from Erickson, the catcher. Again, trying to look out her half. Instead, bounced off the shoulder of the catcher. Two and two the count. Final two innings of this scheduled seven-inning contest. Hit in the air to left field. It has some carry. It has some height. It has the distance for being a solo home run. We are tied once again. Jake Lacey drives a pitch to left field for the home run that ties the game at 6-6. Six to six. Yeah, it's just fast right down the middle. Um, it looked like they were trying to go away, uh, fastball away, uh, but he missed it right down the middle, and Lacey did the damage that he should have done with that pitch. For Jake, the fifth home run of the year, his 24th run batted in. That's just one behind Logan Grant for the team lead, and it is Logan Grant who will step in. Little chopper to the right side. Molina, the first baseman, gloves it, tosses it over to Stevens, covering it first. And Logan Grant is retired three to one on that play. He doesn't see, he look, He seems very antsy today at the plate. I mean, he hasn't looked at a lot of pitches. Um, I feel like he's only seen, you know, six pitches in four at bats. So uh, he seems very antsy wanting to really produce. I mean, that's usually not like him. He usually takes more pitches than that. An 0 for 4 day for Grant. Here's Alec Ackerman on the other end of the scale. Ackerman 3 for 3 today, seven consecutive trips to the plate. He has gotten a base hit. Two singles and a triple, and two runs scored for Alec so far today. The pitch from Stevens, that bounced off the glove of the catcher against the screen, now 2-0. and oh. Dickinson State, I think, realizing the hot bat of Alec here and trying to pitch him very carefully. Let's see how disciplined he can be on this 2-0 and oh count. Yeah, I mean, he can give you the lead with one swing right here, too. Popped up on the infield. The streak will come to an end most likely. The shortstop, Simbab, makes a couple of adjusting steps, and he'll glove it for the second out of the inning. Yeah, I think he's pretty upset with himself right there. That was a fastball right down the middle that he just missed. Uh, so that's usually he doesn't miss those very often and when he does he usually gets pretty upset and he's I don't think he's very happy with himself right now just underneath a little bit got the top part of the bat and popped up here's Steven Elsner Elsner another guy that can change the trajectory of the baseball in a hurry one and oh the count on Steve now 2-0, again, a situation where he'll be looking for a pitch that he can drive a long way. Elsner with six home runs, 17 RBIs on the season. 6-6, six to six, our score. We're in the top of the sixth. How's that for symmetry? That's hit in the air to the right side. Molina, the first baseman, going back. Second baseman also in the area. It'll be the first baseman, Molina, C.J. Molina, who will make the catch to retire the side. The solo home run by Jake Lacey ties things up. One run on one hit. There were no errors and nobody left on base as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're tied six to six, our score. Yeah, good for Bellevue to get that one run. I know they, with that line, with that part of the lineup coming up, they wanted to get more than one for sure. Uh, but they were able to scratch one across. 
Um, now it's up to the chase to keep them here, uh, keep this game tied. Because, uh, again, Dixon State's moment, you know, their confidence is riding really high right now. Um, so they're, they're swinging the bats really well. They're putting good at bats together. They're putting a lot of pressure on, you know, on Shorty and Chase right now. Um, so it's up to get a midi up to Chase right now to answer that and keep them at bay. The two starting pitchers will not figure in today's decision. Right now, the pitchers of record are Jace Wessels for the Bruins and Alex Stevens for the Blue Hawks. Oh, suddenly we got all kinds of texts in the queue. Let's get to some of those. Hello from Tucson, Arizona, streaming live at our dental office while we watch our son, Tate Williams. Go Hawks, says Dallin Williams. Glad you guys are with us today. Don't drill the wrong tooth on somebody, though, while you're watching the game. So, but you're gl we're glad you're with us. Let's go Blue Hawks. The Wilharm family is watching from Arizona. Couple of Blue Hawks there. Hello from Scott's Bluff. Oops, I just hit the wrong thing. Trent Richter's family is watching, and they say thanks for the broadcast. So three consecutive Blue Hawks families in a row. We'll get to more texts in just a moment as we start off the bottom of the sixth inning. Jace will, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Jace Wessels on the first pitch to C.J. Molina, foul back to the screen. Another fastball, that's a little bit low, one and one. Righty lefty matchup here. Wessels breaking ball just a little bit too high, now two and one. You know, uh, Jace earlier in the year, he didn't throw a four-seam fastball, which is kind of mind-boggling to me. He's like, you know, I was watching him throw a pen. Good four-seam fastball there, two and, and two. And everything was, was two-seam. I said, okay, do you throw a four-seam? He goes, no, I only throw a two-seam. And I was like, okay, well, let me see you throw a four-seam. And uh, it exploded out of his hand. And... Hit it on the ground to second base. C.J. Townsend having to go to the middle of the field. One hop throw to first is just in time as Molina goes down after stepping on the bag. He's retired on a nice play by second baseman C.J. Townsend. And he was able to get so much backspin on the baseball that it just it looked like it rose as it was going. And I was like, dude, why don't you throw a four-seam fastball if it does that? He goes, I've never really tried. He said, well, now you have a, just an extra pitch, and you didn't really do anything. Um, so I, I um, talking to Coach Malley and, and, and Jace, he was able to get it figured out and dialed in. Here's shortstop Cole Simbab, a breaking ball in the zone for a call strike one. Use that four-seamer, a couple miles per hour more giddy-up oh, yeah. than a two-seamer. And oftentimes, as you said, you'll get a little rising action as well. Swing and a miss. Good pop on the fastball there from Wessels. 0-2 on Simbab. You know what's good when you can see that difference, too. The, the miles per hour difference. You can see it. You can hear it. And three pitches, three strikes. Cole Simbab goes down for the second out of the inning. That is the second strikeout for Jace Wessels in an inning and two-thirds. Nine-hole hitter, right fielder Cl Luke Clinton next up for the Blue Hawks. On the knees, another fastball in the zone. Jace Wessel working quickly, working effectively as well. He's retired all five of the batters he's faced so far. Takes something off on that breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Seven consecutive strikes thrown by Wessels. Blocked up by Grant. One and two the count. I like that pitch. Obviously, he didn't want to throw it in the other batter's box, but that was a really good pitch. Um, location wasn't where he wanted it, but the plan was great. On the 0-2 count, now 1-2, and two, and now another strikeout. Two strikeouts in the inning. Third strikeout of the game for Jake Wessels. Logan Grant will go out to fist bump with his pitcher. A Thunder three up, three down inning as Jace Wessels has retired all six of the batters he has faced. Heading to the seventh inning, our final inning of the game. If somebody scores a run or more, the caveat here, this game number one, seven inning contest, if we do go extra innings, if we go extra innings of nine or more, then the second game of the doubleheader will become the seven inning game. So let's see how this unfolds. We're tied six to six, the Bellevue Bruins 
and the Dickinson State Blue Hawks. All right, now we had at least one more text in the queue. There it is. Wyatt Wilharm's grandmother and Aunt Corey are watching from Arizona. They say go Blue Hawks. So we're glad we have some folks watching today in this chilly contest. Temperature now in the low 40s. Let's see exactly what it is here. We started, it was 35 degrees. Now we're all the way up to 42, so a heat wave. Expecting a high temperature day in the low 50s in the Omaha Bellevue area. For the Bellevue Bruins in the top of the seventh inning, it'll be Brendan Davis, Nick Grade, and C.J. Townsend, the first three scheduled hitters, going up against Alex Stevens. Brendan Davis? Don't you mean Brendan, Brendan Luther? Luther. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I was like, who is that guy? A newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Brendan Davis? Where, I don't, did, I don't, that, where I, did that even come I from? Uh, I don't know. Right. 24 a few years ago. He was a catcher, red hair. Okay, so that, there, okay, there was a Brendan Davis out on the Bellevue yeah. squad back. I, I've suddenly reverted about seven or eight years. Here's Brendan Luther to start things off. The Bruins shortstop looks at a pitch on the outer half for a called strike one. Luther has been the man of the day with four runs batted in, four of the six on the board. Credited to his RBIs on a pair of doubles. That pitch low, one and one. Again, it's going to come down to the bottom of this lineup, especially if, if Brendan and uh, anyone else can get on ahead of them. It's going to be to the bottom of the lineup and what kind of production they can give. Here's the one one pitch. Now two and one. Brendan was involved in a Collision at home plate with catcher Cam Erickson. He had to step out for an inning or so to be attended to by Mike Livergood, but re-entered the game. He's been a big factor. Now three and one is that one outside. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's taken here no matter what. Get that to that full count. Try and get on base any way you can. He's taking. Pitch on the upper part of the zone. Count does go full. Bruins trying to get their leadoff guy on in this top of the seventh inning. Again, Dickinson State, the home team, as this series was supposed to have been played in North Dakota but moved here because of weather considerations. Here's the payoff pitch. It's down low, and Luther will draw the leadoff walk. So he's been on base three of the four times he's been at the plate today. And now Nick Grade. Probably a sacrifice situation. Yeah, I would look to see more of like a drag bunt um, right away uh, just to give that chance of getting the bases, getting first and second. Um, but if not, he's probably going to bunt it towards the first baseline uh, with the third baseman playing about 10 feet in front of the bag. Luther gets his lead off of first. Bunt up the first base side off the mound comes Stevens to make the play. The sacrifice is executed successfully. Nice job there by Nick Gray to get his job done as Brendan Luther advances to second on the play. Oh, now C.J. Townsend with an opportunity to drive the run home. C.J. had a sacrifice bunt on a suicide squeeze play his last time up. CJ coming into today's action hitting 370. 12 game hitting streak. Line hard, he'll make it a 13 game hitting streak as he lines that one hard to left field, but so hard that the runner, Luther, will only be able to advance to third on the play. No first pitch swinging, CJ Townsend. Now batting the right fielder. Number Here's right fielder Anthony Lind. Lind a one for three day, singled his last time up. Again, don't be surprised to see some type of uh, suicide squeeze, safety squeeze. Um, Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner. Takumi Mayeno will come in to pinch run for C.J. Townsend at first base. Pinch running at first base, number 25, Takumi. How I would play this, you know, at some, you know, first, second pitch, Takumi, you're going to take, you're going to steal second base. That's why he's in there. He's in there to steal second base. That's why he's there. Um, then you have first and, or second and third, one out, probably going to squeeze in that run um, to get that run across, runner at third base, two outs uh, with Monroe coming up. That's kind of how I would play it. 
you know, I don't know if Coach Bunluck sees things the same way, but Takumi's probably going to take off at some point. Takumi with six stolen bases on the season, a perfect six for six. Stevens comes set, long hold, now to throw at first base. He throws it past the first baseman down the right field corner. Into score comes Luther Maeno, rounding second on his way to third. And he'll hold up there as an E1 on the throw to first base. Allows the Bruins to score a run and send Maeno all the way over to third. Yeah, he tried to be way too quick with that pickoff move. But that's the pressure Takumi puts on you. They know he's going to steal at some point, um, and they wanted to try and catch him leaning. I don't think he was going anywhere in that on that first pitch. Um, but the pressure he puts on you on the base paths is pretty hectic. And now the infield will play in. Yeah, C.J. Townsend awaits the pitch, bunts it, puts it down on the squeeze to throw to home. It's not in time. So another RBI for the Bruins via the bunt as Anthony Lynn puts it down, allowing Takumi Mieno to score the eighth run of the game. How are you going to rule that, Bill? Fielder's choice. All right, a fielder's choice for Lynn. He will get an RBI on the play. Now that and that'll bring to the plate Tyler Monroe. So another guy with some pretty good wheels on at first base and Anthony Lynn as Monroe. Tries to keep the Bruins' cause going forward. Eight to six, our score. Runner goes on the hit and run. That's fouled out of play by Monroe. Yeah, the bottom of the order was productive. When, yes. When, he need, when Coach Monlux needed him to be productive. You know, they were a little slow starting. Uh, but when CJ goes, the bottom of the order goes. Um, and that's a huge credit to him. That's kind of how important he is to, the, to this lineup. Anthony Lind at first base has seven stolen bases on the year. Doesn't go on this pitch. One ball, one strike to count. Monroe one for three today. Lind, the Omaha native, gets his lead off of first. Stevens. Delivers. Runner goes. Pitch misses away. Throw to second base is a pretty good one. But the tag missed at second base as Anthony slid to the back half of the base. That was a great slide. I mean, the ball beat him pretty easily, and he was able to get around it. That was a fantastic slide. And give credit to the, um, to, to the umpire. He was in the right position right where he needed to be to be able to see that. So the great base running play by Lynn gets him in scoring position for Monroe. Two and one the count on Tyler. Keeps back on a ground ball to first base. Fielded by Molina. He'll go over and step on the bag. No advance on the play. So now two outs in the inning. Back to the top of the order. Here's Jake Lacey. His solo home run last time up. Tied it at six. The Bruins have tacked on two more here in the seventh inning. As Jake trying to add another one. Stevens, the double look. He was still looking to second base when he threw home. It's a wild pitch. And to the backside of the base once again on Anthony Lynn on the wild pitch. Now 90 feet away from home. Again, that was, that's a kind of a, you usually don't see that with second base, two outs. You're already in scoring position. You don't want to make that third out at third base. Um, sounds like I don't think Dickinson likes the last two <laughs> safe calls by the umpire. Um, getting on him pretty good right now. Um, but great job by Lynn. One and oh the count. Now two and oh the count. Is that one misses low? Lacey two for four on the day. A single and a solo home run. Lacey, a team leading 37 hits on the season. Breaking ball in the zone, two and one. Stevens, a long look in to get the signal from his catcher, Cam Erickson. Tries to shoot the outside corner, misses away. Erickson tried to pull it back 
into the zone on the frame, but doesn't get the call. He does a really good job with that. You know, he's gotten some pitches, borderline pitches for strikes, and that's credit to him being able to frame and stick pitches like that. He does a very good job right behind the plate. Here's the 3-1. That one's going to miss away, so... Lacey draws the walk. He's been on base three of the five times he's been up. And again, runners at the corners for the Bruins as Logan Grant. A frustrating day for Logan, 0 for 4, so he'd like to add to the Bruins' cause here. But first, a visit from Michael Dahl. Don't see anybody warming up in the bullpen, so this probably Alex Stevens. Nope, nope, Stevens going to step out as... Looks like we got another right-hander coming in that had some work down the bullpen that I didn't ca didn't catch. Yeah, let's see if if Logan can be a little bit more selective this at bat. You know, like I talked about earlier, he he hasn't been very selective uh, with swinging at pitches. Um, he's been really antsy, really wanting to go get that hit rather than letting the the at bat come to him. He's trying to. Uh, really go get that baseball, not let it travel and be out in front of everything. So um, let's see if he can make that adjustment here on this at bat. The new pitcher for Dickinson State will be number 31, Trent Chavez. We saw Chavez earlier in the game as a courtesy runner for the catcher. Now he comes in to jump on the pitcher's mound. Chavez, just a freshman. This is his fourth appearance on the season. A good 3.38 earned run average, but only two and two-thirds innings of work. Has allowed four hits, has struck out two and walked none in his brief time on the mound. He will come in in the top of the seventh inning with two runners on. Those two runners, the responsibility of Alex Stevens. He's allowed two runs so far. Chavez, a freshman from Casa Grande, Arizona. Big house. How's that for Spanish translations, huh? Two years of high school Spanish. Boom. Yeah. Let's see if Lacey's on the move uh, with two outs. I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the move at some point um, to keep that pressure on this defense. And yeah, we'll see if Grant might take a pitch or two to allow that to happen. As you mentioned, a Logan just a little bit uh, jumping the gun today. Not not very patient. Let's see if he can pack his patience here to allow the base runner to get it in a scoring position for a chance for two more on the board. Here's the first pitch from Trent Chavez to Logan Grant. Outside, ball one. Two outs in the inning. Two runs across. The Bruins with a two-run lead. That one's hit through on the right side. Logan Grant, the first hit of the day for the Bruin catcher. Another run batted in. And now a 9-6 lead. Anthony Lynn crossing home plate. Jake Lacey advancing to second. And the RBI single for Logan Grant. He'll step out for a courtesy runner. Looks like Samuel Fortier will be the Bruins' courtesy runner now. Alec Ackerman will step to the plate. Noel Ackerman had his seven for seven streak broken his last time. Seven for eight, God, that's that's hardly worth I guess, doing. I guess right? we'll let that go. <laughs> I guess you mean seven for eight, not good enough. North Star Athletic Association Player of the Year two years ago. Injured most of last season. A gold glove player as well for the Bruins. Primarily at the shortstop position then, first baseman now. The pitch from Chavez, up and away. Throw back behind, a nice play by Molina to get that throw. That was wide of the mark from Erickson. 
C.J. Moline has been a pretty busy guy down there at first base today for the Blue Hawks. Yeah, he's saved a few runs or a few uh, errant throws today. 2-0 the count. Just clips the outside part of the plate. 2-1 the count. Ackerman back in. Now three and one. Alec was four for four Tuesday against Morningside, three for four today against the Blue Hawks. Ready to jump out, swing out of his shoes here on a 3-1 pitch that's over the heart of the plate. Especially if he gets a fastball. Fastball it is, he's on it, but right back to the screen. Full count, that means the runners at first and second will be off with the pitch. So anything in the gap will be a definite two runs. A long single could also be two runs. Good speed on the bases for the Bruins with Lacey at second, 40A at first. I wouldn't be surprised to see a breaking ball here. Fouled out of play, we'll do it again. Now that's a fastball. Um, for every reason I say that, it's okay to put Ackerman on first. You don't want him to really extend this lead um, just to load the bases because you still have a chance to get out of this inning with nobody else scoring. Payoff pitch upcoming once again. Lacey and Fortier on the move. Breaking ball. That one's hit to the right field side. Right fielder going back. He'll be able to have room to make the play. And Luke Clinton will haul it in to retire the side. But the Bruins do pick up two big runs on two hits. There was one error. Excuse me, three runs. Where am I? And two men left on base. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, the final frame, Bruin fans hoping. It's the Bruins nine. And the Blue Hawks, six. Back to the mound goes Jace Wessel for his third inning of relief work. He stands to pick up the win if the Bruins are able to close this one out. Yeah, this I think this is the right move uh, to keep him in the game. He's looked really strong in his first two innings of work. Um, I, I know you have Kate Hartman probably ready to go in the pin, so I wouldn't be surprised if one guy gets on that you bring him in. But uh, starting him... Uh, it's probably the right move because uh, he's he's looked really good so far. Six up, six down. Yes, that's that's the definition of really good, <laughs> yeah. including three strikeouts in yeah. those six batters that he has faced. So Jace Wessel trying to nail it down in the seventh. Yeah, he just looks like he has some confidence to him, um, which is a big part of pitching. I mean, if, if you're not confident in yourself, uh, you're not going to get a lot of guys out. He looks very confident in in his stuff right now, and it's shown so far. He'll be facing the top of the order for Dickinson State in this bottom of the seventh inning. Left fielder Nathaniel Jillick will start things off for the Blue Hawks. Now, is Dickinson going to take a strike, uh, which to me they should? Down low, ball one. Um, That's old school thinking, but I agree with it completely. Down, um, by, down by three runs, you want to try to get a guy on any way you can. And a 2-0 start. Um, and what I mean by that is take a strike. You're taking until you get a strike. Um, don't give yourself a chance to get an easy out by swinging at stuff that you normally wouldn't swing at. Here's the 2-0 pitch. And they aren't. High fly ball on the infield. Who's going to take charge? Nick Gray, the third baseman, will look it in. And off. First batter retired. Again, on a 2-0 pitch, you hopefully get something better than that. Yeah, and it's okay to take a strike. You know, one strike isn't going to hurt you in an at-bat. Uh, you have to force the pitcher to throw it in the zone. Um, there's there's times we when you can do that, and it's tied because the pitcher's having a rough time. First pitch to Alberto Nieto. He shows bunt, pulls it back, takes it for a called strike one. Nieto's had a good day at the plate. Two for three, a single and a double. Chopped on the ground to third. Nick Gray looks it in. Throw to first, picked nicely by Alec Ackerman there. Five to three on the play. And the Bruins one out away from securing the opening win in this four-game series. Yeah, that's a very good pick by Ackerman. I mean, it wasn't that hard, uh, but he made it look 
pretty easy. I mean, it was in the middle between a short hop and a long hop, and he was able to go get it pretty good. Last chance for the Blue Hawks, third baseman Wyatt Wilharm. Looks at ball one. Wilharm is last time up, a two-run home run that gave the lead back to the Blue Hawks. Then the Bruins retook it with one in the sixth and three in the seventh. Swing and a miss. Good pop on the heater from Wessels. One for three for Wilharm today. Again, hello to all of his family listening in. They texted in from Arizona. Chopped on the ground to shore. Brendan Luther, another tough hop on the in-betweener. Over to Alec Ackerman and a quick top of the third inning. Three up, three down as the Bellevue Bruins come from behind to win it by a final score of nine to six. Nine runs on 12 hits and no errors for the Bellevue Bruins. Six runs on five hits and two errors for the Dickinson State Blue Hawks. With the victory, the Bellevue Bruins are now 17 and nine overall. 5-0 and in the North Star Athletic Association. With the loss, Dickinson State drops to 3-21, and 1-4 and four in conference play. Give us some final thoughts on today's game. Um, if you, it took them a while to get going. You know, they really didn't get it going until the fifth inning. You know, they put up two in the first. But other than that, uh, Richter did a fantastic job for Dickinson State keeping... Uh, Bellevue's lineup at bay outside of Ackerman and Luther and then you know once they had to go to the pin they're you know kind of their their depth of their bullpen kind of um, showed and it was able Bellevue was able to take advantage of it um, you know knowing coach Mon Lux, he's probably not very happy right now um, good that they came back and won but it took them a while to get going and it can't got to be ready to even though yeah this game started at 10 a.m. they had probably haven't played at 10 a.m. all year <laughs> Um, but there might be a game in the postseason where you play at 10 a.m. Um, if they are able to make it to the World Series, I think they start at 8 a.m. And so it's something that they got to kind of figure out and be ready to go from pitch one, not take that four innings to really get going. So we'll see if they're able to get going right away here in game two, which I would think they would be. They have a full game under their belt. Um, so if they can get going right away in, f in game two to put pressure on Dickinson um, right out of the gate in the first couple innings, uh, th it could be a different ball game. All right, that'll wrap it up for game number one of this doubleheader today. The Bellevue Bruins come away with their 17th win of the season. We'll be back a little bit before 1 o'clock with game number two of this doubleheader today. For Chris Williamson, I'm Mick Krupski. Come on back in a little bit for more baseball on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network.